Hey there. So I'm here today to talk about the history of LGBT rights in socialist countries. To my knowledge, a video about this topic hasn't really been made before, which is strange because it's an interesting topic. The main reason, I suppose, is that it's also a very complex one because there have been so many communist countries and there are also many dynamics and elements to LGBT rights beyond just, you know, can two gay guys have sex? So it's a complex topic. But it's also important to address because a very common and very dishonest narrative around socialist countries among liberals is that they were and still are extremely discriminatory towards queer people. But in fact, where there were and still are many failures when it comes to LGBT rights under socialism, there were also, especially in comparison to capitalist countries at the same times, unparalleled successes for their time and even still today. This video will first explore LGBT rights in no longer extant socialist countries, before I will go on to explore LGBT rights in still existing socialist countries. I might also do a more in-depth dive into some of these countries in another video, for example in the GDR or Cuba or even China, but for now this video is meant just to be a brief overview of LGBT rights in all socialist countries throughout history. Of course, for countries like in South Yemen and the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan, there was no available literature on the topic of LGBT rights, so they are not mentioned. And for most countries on which there is available information, there's mainly just information relating to gay rights, as ideas such as non-binary or trans people were rarely discussed much at all, even up to the 90s. So. Yeah, if, if I mostly talk about gay rights in this video, that's why. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. The country people probably think of the most when they think of LGBT rights under socialism is probably the USSR, particularly thanks to its famous conflation of homosexuality with the bourgeois and fascism. But for a period of over a decade, the USSR was arguably the most progressive country for LGBT rights in the world only paralleled by the Weimar Republic in terms of its progressiveness. The USSR, and more specifically the Russian and Ukrainian SSRs, were the first countries in modern 20th century Europe to decriminalize homosexuality. The old legal code, including the legalization of homosexuality, was abolished, and in 1922 it was officially decriminalized in the new legal code, making the USSR the first industrialized state to officially recognize same-sex relationships and even marriage. The USSR alongside Weimar Germany briefly led the world in gender corrective surgery, with Soviet medical experts working alongside transgender people and exploring the idea of gender not being a simple binary of men and women, but instead a spectrum. The biologist N.K. Koltstov even argued that there is no intermediate sex, but rather an infinite quantity of intermediate sexes. Several Soviet doctors were assembled into an expert commission to study sexes, and ideas such as Koltstov's began to gain support, with many thousands of people testifying to their own confusion over their own gender identities. All in all, the honeymoon period for queer rights in the USSR lasted over a decade before the commission set up to study sexes was expanded in 1932, and homosexuality was officially criminalized again in 1936, and with it gender corrective surgeries as well. An estimated 500 to 1,000 men were imprisoned each year after that for homosexual acts, and of course countless people that could have potentially transitioned no longer did so. Ultimately, despite its remarkable and almost entirely forgotten innovations in regard to LGBT rights, the progression of LGBT rights in the USSR was overall a failure, and one of the USSR's single biggest failures, in fact. This doesn't mean, of course, that we should forget also its innovations. This is, of course, also not taking into account countries that were not part of the USSR, but instead part of the Warsaw Pact, a military alliance of numerous communist countries in the East. LGBT rights in these countries varied greatly, but were generally more progressive than in the USSR itself, especially as time went on. Here we will briefly and non-exhaustively outline the history of LGBT rights in each of these countries. 
arguably where LGBT rights were the most advanced in any European socialist country, was in the German Democratic Republic, even though these achievements came rather late in the GDR's lifetime. Homosexuality was officially decriminalized in the GDR in 1968. However, it hadn't really been legally enforced since 1957. The German government viewed it neither as an illness nor a legitimate sexual identity, but a long-term biological problem. However, East Germany was at least more advanced than West Germany was, which actually only decriminalized homosexuality a year after East Germany did. However, gay rights groups in East Germany, especially in the later 70s, continued to face suppression. It was only in 1985, when a shift in GDR policy, that things really began to improve for queer people. The party itself remained rather ambivalent towards queer people. Many party officials sought to develop a more integrative policy towards homosexuals. State organizations, such as the Family Planning Services, began training staff for issues with sexual identity and creating events for the LGBTQ community. In 1987, the TV program Visit broke many taboos in openly discussing homosexuality as a natural part of human sexuality. In 1988, the German Hygiene Museum, working in cooperation with East German gay and lesbian activists, commissioned the state film studio DIFA to make the documentary film Die and Der Lieb or The Other Love, which was intended to convey official state acceptance of homosexuality. And in 1989, a film called Coming Out was released that also dealt with LGBT issues. Of course, the 1985 policy reforms were mainly left up to the interpretation of local party officials, and homophobia was still relatively commonplace in East Germany. However, the state's approach to homosexuality was still amongst the most progressive of anywhere in the world at the time, and though the GDR never fully realized its potential in regards to LGBT rights, it was swiftly moving in a promising direction before its collapse. When the Socialist Republic of Yugoslavia was formed, it adopted the previous criminal code of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, which effectively banned same-sex relationships. The Socialist Republic of Yugoslavia later made the law less harsh in 1959, but homosexual relationships were still effectively illegal and punishable by up to a year in prison. Under this law, around 500 homosexuals were imprisoned between 1951 and 1977, but half of which serve probation. For comparison, however, many Western European countries, such as West Germany, United Kingdom, and Italy, convicted tens of thousands of homosexuals during the same period, often with much worse prison terms. So, relatively, Yugoslavia was still far more progressive than most Western European countries when it came to LGBT rights. In the 1970s, the legal and social sphere of Yugoslavia started to liberalize, in favor of LGBT rights. The League of Communists of Yugoslavia held debates on the topic at least three times, until in 1976 it requested decriminalization in all republics. In 1977, the Socialist Autonomous Province of Vojvodina, Socialist Republic of Croatia, the Socialist Republic of Montenegro, and the Socialist Republic of Slovenia enacted their own individual penal codes and decriminalized same-sex intercourse. Male intercourse still remained illegal, however, in the Socialist Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Socialist Republic of Macedonia, and the Socialist Republic of Serbia throughout the rest of the Yugoslav Socialist Republic's existence. In 1961, the Czechoslovak Socialist Republic decriminalized same-sex sexual intercourse after scientific research led to the state's conclusion that homosexual orientation cannot be changed. The Hungarian People's Republic adopted the Penal Code of the Kingdom of Hungary, which punished male same-sex sexual intercourse with prison of up to one year. In 1961, however, male same-sex sexual intercourse above the age of 20 was decriminalized. In 1978, a new penal code lowered the age of consent to the age of 18 years old. The People's Republic of Bulgaria retained the penal code of the Kingdom of Bulgaria that criminalized male same-sex sexual intercourse with at least six months of imprisonment. 
the Penal Code of 1951 increased the penalty to up to three years in jail. However, in 1968, male same-sex intercourse was finally legalized. Same-sex intercourse was always legal during the existence of the Republic of Poland and during the Polish People's Republic, making it unique among the Eastern European socialist countries in that regard. But though LGBT rights were considered relatively progressive in Poland at the time, the queer community still faced significant persecution. In the 1980s, the government used people's homosexuality to blackmail them, and the police harassed gay men and lesbians frequently. Many homosexual men were even arrested in 1985 in Operation Hyacinth in order to create a national database of gay men. The Romanian People's Republic adopted the Romanian Penal Code from the Kingdom of Romania, which banned public acts of sex committed between men or between women. In 1948, this public homosexuality was considered by the courts to include all situations, whether public or private, if, quote, provoking scandal, end quote. Thus, homosexuality became de facto illegal. In the new penal code of the Romanian People's Republic, the punishment was toughened with penalties up to a minimum of two years and a maximum of five years. In 1957, the public scandal provision was repealed, and any consenting sexual intercourse between persons of the same sex was criminalized, and it remained as such throughout the country's existence. The People's Socialist Republic of Albania was arguably the worst of any Eastern European socialist country in terms of queer rights. It penalized same-sex sexual intercourse with prison terms of up to 10 years, and this remained the situation throughout its existence. In the Mongolian People's Republic, same-sex relationships were completely legal until being criminalized in 1961, and they remained as such for the rest of its existence. In Africa, LGBT rights usually remained unchanged based on the laws that were in place prior to the country becoming socialist. But given that in many countries today in Africa where anti-homosexuality laws are often extremely strict to the point of open endorsement of public lynchings, queer rights in African socialist countries, at least some of them, were relatively progressive. For example, same-sex intercourse was legal throughout the history of the Socialist Republic of the Congo, as it was in the People's Republic of Benin, so long as you were over the age of 21. Gay rights were not ever protected in the People's Republic of Mozambique, but nor were they ever actually illegalized either. However, certain socialist countries in Africa were far less progressive in terms of queer rights. People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia adopted the previous penal code of the Ethiopian Empire, which criminalized homosexuality, and never decriminalized it. In the People's Republic of Angola, homosexuality also remained illegal throughout its existence. And under Article 409 of the Somali Penal Code introduced in 1973, sexual intercourse with a person of the same sex was punishable by imprisonment from three months to three years. All right, now that we're done exploring LGBT rights in former socialist states, Let's look at LGBT rights and socialist states that still exist. Cuba is arguably the most obvious example of the success of LGBT rights under socialism, though it wasn't always this way. Homosexuals were initially put in camp to work away their homosexuality, as it was seen as something that was conditioned rather than biological. Fidel Castro personally apologized for this in 2012, ultimately taking responsibility for the actions of the Cuban government against queer people. Rights for LGBT people have gradually improved significantly over time in Cuba, however. Since June 2008, qualifying Cubans have been able to have free sex reassignment surgeries, and in 2020, Cuba passed an extremely progressive family code by a referendum that won by a supermajority of the Cuban people. The Family Code fully illegalizes any form of discrimination against LGBT people and makes them fully equal to any other citizen in Cuban law, making them one of the most progressive nations for LGBT rights not just among socialist states, but among any country in the world, and alone proving pretty decisively that socialist countries can do not just as good, but much better than basically all other capitalist countries in terms of protecting queer people. 
Laos is a country that is quite progressive in terms of LGBT rights in many ways. Same-sex activity is legal in Laos, and people have the legal right to change their gender as well. But it also doesn't recognize same-sex marriage, nor does it prohibit discrimination against the LGBT community. Overall, though they still face significant legal obstacles and discrimination, LGBT people in Laos are largely accepted, neither punished nor promoted by the Laotian government. As of 2000, same-sex activity in Vietnam was officially legalized, and before then was never officially criminalized. Same-sex unions are allowed, though they do not always face the same set legal protections as heterosexual couples do. Queer rights in Vietnam are continually improving to this day. People have the legal rights to change their gender as of 2017. Conversion therapy has been banned as of 2022. And there are growing, yet still limited, anti-discrimination protections for trans people as well. However, though tolerance towards LGBT people is improving, homophobia and transphobia is still deeply entrenched within Vietnamese society, and many LGBT people still face extensive persecution as a result. LGBT rights in China is a really complex topic, given that there's a lot of propaganda and it's hard to know what's true or not at times. While both male and female same-sex sexual activity are legal, same-sex couples are currently unable to marry or adopt, and households headed by such couples are ineligible for the same legal protections available to heterosexual couples. No explicit anti-discrimination protections for LGBT people are present in its legal system, nor do hate crime laws cover sexual orientation or gender identity. Things might overall be trending for the worse in China. Shanghai Pride, the country's largest LGBT celebration, was shut down in 2020, and there has also been a rising trend against the portrayal of effeminate men in media. People are allowed to transition their gender and receive hormone medication, but there are many restrictions to this, like not being a minor, not being married, receiving approval from your family, and not having a criminal record, though these restrictions and the extent to which these restrictions are applied can vary greatly from province to province. There are no legal protections nor criminalizations relating to LGBT rights in North Korea. There have, however, been several instances of homophobic sentiments that have been expressed by North Korean media. Cross-dressing openly is reported to exist, and such behavior is said to be largely tolerated and not a major social issue or a topic of discussion in North Korea in society compared to South Korea, as it is not seen as something that is all that out of the ordinary. This isn't, of course, to mention not actual communist states, but communist parties and their own innovations in terms of LGBT rights. For example, the first gay marriage in the Philippines took place in 2005 among two members of the New People's Army, the armed wing of the communist Philippine party, and they continue to openly support queer people in the otherwise very homophobic Philippines to this day. In conclusion, I hope this video has served to show that resounding and unparalleled successes for LGBT rights in places like the GDR, Cuba, the New People's Army, certain countries in Africa, and early on in the USSR, prove decisively that so-called dictatorial and authoritarian and reactionary socialist states cannot just protect LGBT rights, but innovate extensively in providing unheard of liberties and protections towards queer people. Nothing I've done on this channel would be possible without the support of my viewers, and particularly those of my patrons. If you'd like to help support me so that I can continue making videos, consider doing so on Patreon, where you get access to Patreon exclusive videos and essays early access to all of my other videos, as well as other unique perks. Thank you for any support you may be able to give, and I hope you enjoy the video.